Hey there, this is Malorian, and this is the third episode of Jank Tank. Now, unfortunately, we have had a, a run of problems on this show. First episode, we weren't able to get the intro and outro right, or rather I couldn't. Second one, we had a virus attack and I got knocked off. And now in this one here, we don't have Tin Man. Now, to be fair, Tin Man is off watching the new Avengers 2 Age of Ultron and... To be completely honest, if I had the opportunity, like if somebody phoned me right now and said, hey, Malorian, we could go and see the Age of Ultron, I'd be like, okay, done, stop the show, we're out of here. But um, I want to try and make sure that we keep this show more consistent. I hope you guys will appreciate that. I want to make sure that we hit the same time, you know, every single week. And so here I am, and I got tons of questions and lots of things to cover, so having a good time so otherwise for those who haven't seen jank tank before it's a more of a, a positive war machine show where we're talking about just more of the fun things in war machine and meanwhile kind of also looking at the janky things you can do too so with that uh my name is malorian brian and what have i been up to this week well first of all what am i drinking i'm drinking some uh pepsi and old vodka this is vodka that we picked up when we had to empty out my my passed on grandmother's house, so God knows how old this stuff actually is. But that's what I'm drinking. And this last week has been, I don't know, kind of interesting. It's been a week where I've been trying to really get things going for the local community, trying to say like, "Hey guys, let's do this painting challenge," and there'll be nothing. And I'll be like, "Hey guys, we should totally go on this road trip," and there's like zero response. And so it's been one of these things that's been really hard to get going. Uh, in fact, I was kind of joking that one of the things that's really a, a killer is my my brother, where whenever I'm like, yeah, you know what, let's do this crazy new thing, and my brother will say, oh, no, that list is easy to destroy. My cricks will destroy that. And so it really is going to sucks the fun out of it for you. So either way, uh, I've made it through the week, and I am really excited because I just bought and built things that I am going to be using this weekend in a tournament. It is the May Day tournament here in Edmonton, uh, one that's put on every single year by the Edmonton War Gaming community. And what they really do is they just host all these different types of games. So if you are wanting to see Malifaux or Infinity or whatever, they host tons of different games so you can come in and demo them. And at the same time, they run these tur tournaments as well. So you can come in and see these tournaments and uh, I'm going to be part of the War Machine one. So is my brother. And unfortunately, I can't stay for the whole thing. That's going to be the really sucky part. I would love to be in the whole tournament. But I have my brother's wife's birthday party to go to. So I'll be leaving to do that. So knowing that and knowing that I can't stay the whole time, I've settled on a couple of lists I want to do more for fun. You know, I could take out my cane too and pew, 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 shoot stuff down. But you know what? No, we, we're going to be in this for more of the fun. And so I guess um, we might as well go straight into what the, the jank or junk is. But what I'm going to be running for one of the lists, which isn't so crazy, is a Ashen list. This is the one you've seen me play. I've only played it once. I have lost. Uh, I was hoping to get some practice games today, but the guy backed out. So what are you going to do? But uh, this is one where it's Ashlyn, Rossinante. Uh, we got First Mate Hawk with the Press Gangers, Alexia 1, Anastasia, Rupert, two units of Forge Guard. There was two units of Press Gangers, by the way, and then Gun Mages with UA. So that one is more of a somewhat typical uh, list for... Uh, Ashlyn, it's really get up there, pop that feet, make things really hard to hit, and then using her, her spells to really speed up those Forge Guard and drop those big hits and wipe them out. And of course, there's Anastasia there and all the rest of it, so uh, they can really do lots and lots of damage once they get in there. And of course, Ashlyn's pretty cool too, so yeah, it'll be neat to see. Now, as far as the whole jank or junk goes, that's where we get to the next list that I have, which is my Magnus One tier list. I'm not sure if I've talked about this one before, but we're going to actually use this one as the spotlight for the 
um, jank or junk. And then we're going to see how it does in this tournament coming up. Because, of course, I'll bring my camera and I'll make battle reports and stuff too. Uh, by the way, I see there's a couple of viewers. Go and pop up your questions. I got a lot of other questions to answer too, but you throw your own up there. I can answer your questions. So what this one is is the Tier 4 Epic Mag... Sorry. P Magnus list and this one I just I've been dreaming of this list for a while really been wanting to play it and it's finally now I have what I need because I actually need six Buccaneers so here's the list you got P Magnus who is running a galleon so you got that big kid in there and of course with snipe and all that makes it a little bit dangerous I have two renegades six Buccaneers and then a max unit of halberdiers and a min unit of halberdiers and this list looks crazy but does some pretty crazy things as well. So what I get from the tier is that those Renegades are each a point cheaper, so saving two points there is not so bad. Uh, otherwise, the Halberdiers get an advanced move, so that kind of gets them up there as well. Um, for any of these jacks in the list, I could also put down wreck markers within 20 inches, so if I want to get some cover out there, you know, it's not like I'm going to take all these and go boop, 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 and put cover everywhere because I don't have Pathfinders. So that would be a real problem. But especially with all these Buccaneers, if I want to put a little bit of medium bases around as some cover, I can do that. So that's great. Uh, basically cover on demand. And then past that, I get to have my upkeeps starting out there. And that is amazing for P. Magnus because he has four upkeeps and he also is resourceful. So you get to upkeep all these for free. Now, where this really gets interesting is, first of all, I mean, you got some stuff in there. Like if you are facing a ranged army, you can have one of your Buccaneers go and net your own caster. And because he has feigned death, you just can't even shoot me. So, I mean, that cover you're getting for free is pretty nice, but it's also pretty nice to have, oh, chance encounter saying, is it Mayweather or, oh, uh, Pasek? Wheel. Yeah, I, I do not follow that stuff very much at all anymore. But anyway, we're getting off topic. Getting, I want to finish this first with the Janker junk. But so there's that. But here's the biggest thing it is super, super, super fast. So, you, like I said, you have those halberd ears, they get the advanced move, and then of course they're running up. But the biggest thing are these buccaneers. And I mean, this is why I have buccaneer number six here. This is why I got six freaking buccaneers, is the whole idea. That they can run up, I can pop my feet with P Magnus, and they can run again. And that's jamming from 24 inches away. In fact, they have reach, so they're jamming from 26 inches away. So let's say I decide to go second, or they win initiative, and I'm going second either way. If you move five inches out of your deployment zone, I can engage you. <laughs> it's just that's how freaking fast this list is. Now, they're Buccaneers, they're garbage, they're POW 10s, you know, defense 13, armor 15. However, you have to deal with them. And especially because normally in the early stages of the, the game, you haven't unpacked your army yet. Well, these guys rush up, they engage all your frontline infantry, making it very hard to kind of get your heavies to them. But either way, the biggest thing is that you are stuck there for a turn. So you went first, moved up. I go first, feet, tie you down. Meanwhile, you know, of course, you have the Halbert Ears are running up there for a second wave. You have this freaking, uh, I have, what is it, Iron Aggression up onto the uh, Colossal, onto the, the Galleon. So it's running up there for free uh, from the feet. The Renegades are catching up there as well. And so you're stuck there for a turn. On my turn two, I'm already going to start scoring here now. So I'm starting to score. The halberdiers are coming in to jam. You know, really, I also could be assassinating as well. I got two freaking renegades. And so if I can get a shot off to knock down your caster, the galleon just goes beep, 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 and shoots you down. Or if there's an open lane so I can drag you in, knock down the caster, drag it in, and just kill that thing. And uh, he also has snipe. So, man, it is a, an interesting list that, is very strong on scenario that at first look looks like garbage. So <laughs> it'll just be cool to have all these freaking buccaneers all over the place. Um, I'm not going to have them painted for this weekend in time, but I'm trying to get the first base coat on anyway. But uh, yeah, should be a lot of fun. 
So there's that jank or junk. Uh, one of the things that we haven't really done in the past is post down below what you think think of this list. You know, is it jank? Is it actually actually workable, or is it junk? It's like, wow, Malorian, that list is horrible. All right, so we did have that question there from Chance Encounter saying whether it's going to be Mayweather or Pistachio, whatever his name is, and I got to go with Mayweather because that's the name I've heard before. So he must be good. So there's that one there. Uh, otherwise, again, the outro to this will be made from the pictures that you guys send to me. And I've had some more pictures sent in. Um, one of the ones, they asked to do a shout out here. So I'm going to go and do that quick. And this is going to go out to this one. Oh, of course, you're going to screw up. And this one's going to be coming out to uh, Ryan McCullen. And he sent me some pictures of Balder and his stones. You guys will see it in the outro. But he wanted to do a shout-out to their Facebook page, which is called the New England Modelers. And this is a, a, a page that's not just for them. It's supposed to be for people to come in and post pictures of your different projects of whatever you're working on. I'm assuming War Machine related, but he was hoping for me to do a little shout out for there because they're trying to grow the Facebook page. So go there, check it out. Uh, again, that was called New England Modelers. So check that one out there. All right. Otherwise, we like I said, we have a lot of other questions. Viewers, feel free to post yours up as well. But we are going to start with the ones on the Google Plus page. Now, again, if you guys haven't gone for this, it's called the War Machine YouTubers. Again, we're trying to, to build this up so that YouTubers are working together. We're at about 120 uh, people now so far, so that's pretty good. But first question we have here is from Bob Smith. And it says, how good do you think Pharaoh will be after their battle engine finally releases? Or Gators when their new unit comes out? Well, the Gators part's kind of easy to say because we have no idea what it does. So who knows? I mean, maybe it's freaking amazing and it's going to be pushing them to the next level. But at this point, we don't even know what it really does. Um, somehow they work together and light things on fire. But how that works, we don't know yet. Or if it's been spoiled, I haven't seen that yet. The battle engine does look fairly solid. It is really going to be mincing a lot of that infantry, uh, especially the smaller base stuff. But the more I think about it, the more I think about how that actually doesn't help them very much. Um, if there's one thing that Minions has been good at dealing with, it's with kind of this more uh, infantry-based list because they can dig in, they have really great POW guns, and they can go pew, 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 do little things, just shoot and charge, and they can actually deal with this stuff. So the more I think of it, the less of an effect I think this battle engine is actually going to have. So that's very unfortunate. Really what it comes down to minions is minions needs to get more heavies. That's just what they need to get. Um, having fancy battle engines and stuff like this is nice, but we need these extra options for heavies, especially reach heavies that will really let them move to that next level. So um, it's a step in the right direction, and who knows when the new book comes out, maybe there's some of that stuff in there too that they haven't spoiled yet. But I keep on waiting because they always seem like they're close, especially the Gators. The Gators are getting very close right now, and it just seems they just get their gargantuan or a new heavy, they could be there. So we'll see if that happens. Next question from Marth Wright, who should really be making more videos, uh, says, which Signar theme force do you consider too good and for what reason? Well, I saw this question before as it was posted, and really, I can't think of one that's really too good. I mean, that's the thing with most of the Signar uh, tier lists, is that most of them are really, really meh. There are ones where it's like, uh, you know, it's, it's just I got to take two of this unit that I don't really want to take. And so it's nothing that's really amazing. In fact, whenever you do have a tier list that you do take, it's something where it's like, oh, okay, it, it's usable. So a good one would be like the, the E. Haley one that gets the, the two storm crawlers or whatever, striders, storm striders, that gets the three tokens on it and advanced deploy. Like that stuff's kind of interesting, but... Yeah, uh, it's nothing that's kind of like over the top. And so 
man, it'd be nice if we got some more tier lists, especially for some of the ones that you don't see very often, like maybe a new tier list for Sloan or something like this. But as it stands right now, I don't feel any of the tier lists are too good for Signar. Um, if there's anything that's close, thanks for writing the water there, family. Uh, if there's anything that's close, I believe the best tier list in Signar is that Sons of the Tempest list. Um, but yeah, I mean, it doesn't, it's not crushing people. Uh, Stephen Walker is watching and he says, uh, Weedman or Belfort. I always like Belfort. And again, I haven't been watching stuff in a long time. I don't know if you guys are even putting me on, like maybe these guys are even fighting and you're just like, yeah, Jesus versus Jackie Chan. Um, Belfort, uh, he's a great fighter. So hope he wins. But, I, man, I've been all that stuff for a while. Uh, we have another one here for Stephen Walker saying, Signar doesn't need tier lists. They cheat just fine without them. And that's really a big part of their tier list. Whereas if you're looking at Circle or Scorn or something else, your tier lists kind of limit you, right? That's the negative for these tier lists is that you can have all these options, but if you want to get these bonuses, you can only take from here. Well, when you're talking about Signar, we have some really good choices that we really want to take. And so if you limit those out, that really hurts us. As well, we're basically a double faction. We have Signar, we have mercenaries. And so once you go to tier list, right away, it's like all those mercenaries for the most part are gone. So you've like cut our list in half before you even restrict it even further for whatever the regular tier list stuff is. So yeah, it's, it's a pretty big deal. So otherwise, to answer your question there, Marth, I don't feel any of the, the Signar ones are too good. All right, next one here is from Gaston. And this is, I mean, Gaston, for guys who don't know, he's from Advanced Maneuvers. Um, really always love seeing his list because they're always the kind of more crazy ones. But this one here, he, he says, uh, tank this jank. And he gives us a list. And what it is, is Sturm and Drang, a road hog, two war hogs, a min unit of bone grinders, a max unit of brigands, Gudrun the Wanderer, two of the new Efferit scouts, uh, Pendrake, Rorsch and Brine, and saying, let me know if you need deeper thoughts on my strategy. And I, I got to be honest here, right away when I saw the list, I was like, I have no idea. I, I'm pretty sure I have never faced uh, Strum and Drang. It's just never come up. I mean, it's rare enough to fight pigs. And for those who haven't, don't really know what this caster is, he's the one that's like a centaur with two different heads. And you get to pick like which one's in control and whether which spell lists you have. It's a really crazy caster. Um, some interesting spells, but you never see the guy. So when I saw this list here, especially since I don't know what the effort scouts even do, I said, Gaston, could you, could you give me some more tips of how this works? And I'll go to my email now to show you what he said. All right. And what he says here, as I try and pull this up, it's kind of a long response, but that's because it's, a little bit of a deeper strategy. It says, nice and long, one of the main downsides people point out uh, to playing pigs competitively is that they are forced to play an honest game. Very straightforward, not very much in the way of crazy tricks. This shot at Sturm and Drang is an attempt to push pigs into a playing a dishonest, dishonest game by positioning jank. And again, um, from Advanced Maneuvers, very cool list I just saw in their... Uh, YouTube page as well, as they took kind of like a swarmy uh, pig list. And I've never seen that done before. It's just tons and tons of guys. And so I love the fact that they're actually trying to get something janky and working for minions. It's it's just awesome to see. Uh, Sturm has, uh, has up Watcher and uses that to escort up the two Warhogs down the table, LeConte style. So that's a really good way to get them moving up and as well, I mean, if you ever try and take them out, you watcher them and basically just move them away. They'll take a free strike, but they don't die. And as long as you don't attack, it doesn't expire. So it's pretty cool. Um, Pendrake brings beast lore, but also the chain bola knockdown and Strom's feet means that a jack or beast will have used up all of its fury standing up. 
Uh, Everett just rock. I, again, I don't know the rules yet. They can rip an arm off of a jack in one go, and in two goes, take a spirit's the spirit off of a beast so that when you knock it down, it can't be forced to stand back up. TK is, uh, uh, sorry, TK a heavy backwards and weapon lock it with the Roadhog. Uh, Brigands for bodies help with scenario. Gudrun for shifting stone sniping. Now, when he said this here, I was surprised because I don't normally see Gudrun sniping stones. It's not like he leaps or anything like that, like with a, a totem hunter, but I guess it works. Um, or solo hunting also can be TK or lightning struck. That's true. Uh, obviously, double TK increases all the threats by four inches. And brine, a 16 linear threat range. So that's pretty cool. Um, so the goal of the list is to come at your opponent from unexpected angles and provide non-traditional solutions to problems. On the meat thresher, A, it's never going to actually be released. That's why everyone was insane for cheering uh, that they were doing it in plastic. And B, it will require a ton of practice, but one you'll really get good with uh, the positioning. It will outperform the Sacker Vault. Well, that's some pretty big boast. We'll see if that comes true. But either way, really like to see the, the list sent in. Uh, by the way, that's going to kind of lead into a contest announcement I'm going to do for the next month here. So for the month of April... And if you're watching this and you have time to get this cutoff date uh, for that YouTube uh, War Machine YouTubers Google Plus page, if you go onto the page in April and posted a, a battle report from your channel, a random one is going to be winning a battle group box. Well, we're going to have the new contest here for May coming up. And uh, this one here is going to be going to, all you have to do to, to win this one, although there'll be more details coming up after this, is go to the actual page and post an army list. Again, I'm trying to get this to be a place where people are coming together. I would love it if that's where me and Gaston are talking lists and stuff like this. But there's a little uh, sneak peek of that contest that I'll be announcing right away. Either way, we're now done with that question, and we still got a lot more, so we better get at it. Da, 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 da. Get out of your email. Nobody likes your style. So next question on here. Oh, and that's it from the War Machine YouTuber page. Next question from the video that I put up comes from Ben Ellis saying, Hi, Els. Um, how do I beat them with a Warriors of Chaos Army uh, monster fluff list with Throg and Leader? Uh, I have around... 5,000 to 6,000 points. You know what, guys? I mean, I'm, I'm starting to think that I need to cut those ties with fantasy. I'm just too far out of it now. So um, thanks for still posting that there, but I don't even know how things have changed, what rules are being used from the ends of times, so I can't really answer that. So sorry, I'm not really sure. Go send forth Demon Prince of Death and kill things. Uh, Richard Potter saying, you mentioned in the first Jank Tank that you run some tournaments. What are some tools and tips you have for running successful and smooth tournaments? Yeah, I run some tournaments, usually at least two every year. And some of the things that I use as tools is, I know there's Doyu that now the um, press gangers use, but I normally just use Excel. I'll have it all set up in Excel where I have the names down the one side and I'll put in the control points, points destroyed, blah, blah, blah. And I can just organize in there, right? Go to data sort and I can very quickly get those matchups done. You can also always type in all the equations too to make it work for strength of schedule and all the other stuff. Although it does get a little bit more complicated and um, it's a lot more work. Uh, in the end, I'm going to be moving to Doyu, but the best thing uh, or the cheapest thing it usually seems to be just to be doing Excel. Now, otherwise, what do you need to do to be successful in these uh, tournaments? Get them on time. Have good communication. Make sure that people know where to get all the information. Nothing's more annoying than not knowing, okay, do I have to send in a list? Where do I have to send it? Where do I have to send money? What time do you open? That time you say, is that registration or is that first game? Because that's important. You know, that communication is very, very key. And then once you're there, staying on time. It's really annoying to have games where it's like, okay, this is now going extended. We're going to get rid of lunch now and all this. You know, really try and keep that time schedule. And 
sometimes that means you have to go to tables and say, no, guys, it's over. But my death clock, sorry, guys, you must have not start your death clock right away, and I need to keep this going. So it is done, dice down, add up your stuff. And you might piss off some of them, but it's better than pissing off everybody by going very long. Um, this May Day tournament I'm going to is actually a good example for that because the guy running it, Kevin, he's right on the ball. It's like, start your clocks now. You know, if you don't start your clocks, you're out of here type thing. So you really have to do that. Um, and then, of course, listen to them. Make sure you get your feedback, right? Go out, out there, run your event, and then ask people, what did you like? What did you not like? And then just try and improve from there. Um, otherwise, if you want to get your numbers up, you have to be able to be part of the different groups. Make sure that you know all the different gaming groups in your areas. Spread that knowledge. Put out posters, whatever you need to do to make sure everybody knows. All right, next question. Comes from Thomas Mertens saying, could you apply steamroller scenarios to Warhammer as they are written in the packet? Would that be a viable alternative to the base book scenarios? You can kind of, the ones that are based off zones, those you can just use. Those will work right away. The ones with objectives don't because the objectives block you. Uh, and so when you're running fantasy and you have these big blocks, if you come up to a big pillar, it, it really screws up the game. So that part doesn't really work. But the whole thing with zone controls and flag controls, that will work. So there you go. Next one here from Liberty Prime saying, I'm pretty new to War Machine Hordes. Can you please give me a reliable striker 2 list for 25 points and 35 points? Uh, thanks a lot. Love your videos. Well, thanks for watching. And I, I already put together a 35, which was striker 2, Stormwall, Stormwall, Archduke. That's a pretty damn good 35-point list. Um, pretty much you have them going up shooting. You're going to be putting up your positive charge. And then as soon as they start destroying them, Archduke gives Pathfinder to Striker, and he just zips out and kills whatever he wants. So there's that one there. Um, I didn't actually make a 25, so let's make it right now. Why not? And even have another drink. Now, I said before about Striker 2... And I'll say it again, the beautiful thing about Striker 2 is that he almost just wants a real distraction army. He wants to get in there. He wants to kill the caster. And so he just wants really anything that distracts the enemy. Now, I'm going to be starting here with Striker. We're going to be adding on his good old buddy, Old Rowdy. He also likes taking Storm Blades, so we're going to take a couple units of them because they're cheap and they move up. Um, he also likes Sword Knights because Sword Knights are cheap. Boop, boop, and they get to, to move up extra. Let's try and extend his threat a bit. We are going to be adding, first of all, we are going to be adding Junior to get Arcane Shield onto him. Do, 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 do. And then we are going to be Oh, right, we're doing 25. I'm already passed. i got to watch this. So, hmm, I don't like this. Uh, those 25 points go pretty damn quick. So, whereas I was going lots of infantry, I think I'm going to change this. So, I'm going to take out the combat infantry. So, currently, we're back down to Striker 2, Old Rowdy, and then the German Warcaster. And I'm going to transform this into a gun line. So, we are going to be adding... Gun Mages with UA, Black 13th, I'm going to add Rangers, two points then. Again, those points go damn quick. So what we're at right now, yeah, Striker 2, Old Rowdy, Gun Mages with UA, Black 13th, Rangers, uh, Journeyman Warcaster, and then I have two more points. And with those two more points, I am going to be adding, adding Malin Corbeau. So that as things come after you, you're going to be going pew, 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 shooting things down. And then once they get to you, they'll let him move up his three inches, then zip out and kill the caster. So there you go. There's a 25-point list and a 35-point list. Next one, Luck God, uh, which was, did I not do a shout-out to you yet? Um, that was another shout-out I was supposed to do. Uh, one of the things that really encouraged me to do the 
uh, painting challenge this week is I saw that there was this whole thing for Moro and May. So this was something that was on the Signar forum. Uh, this guy here, uh, Tom Bell, he was going to go and paint up all of his, his Moro stuff. And it's a lot to paint. So it'll be inter interesting to see if he can do it. And then also play the hell out of Constance. So we're going to see if he's able to, to get that part done. But I was like, wow, you know, I have a lot of guys I'd like to get done. Uh, you know, three units of precursor knights, and but you know, managed to do my gun mages instead. Maybe I should be doing these guys. And then all of a sudden, I kind of lost interest, and nobody else wanted to do the challenge with me. But he actually has a blog he runs here. Uh, it is called War Gaming with Luck God. A lot of stuff in here, mainly around Signar, but you should check it out. He likes doing strategies and, and tactics, so you can come check it out. So I'll close that one. Otherwise, I believe there was another one here. Uh, so Luck God asked me, what are your thoughts on Constance Blaze? Well, Constance Blaze is an interesting caster and one that you almost never see. And that's because she's not instantly flashy. Um, whereas you have Kane 2 going pew, 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 and you have Epic Haley controlling things and doing all this TKing and feeding so that you have to forgive your mov movements and stuff like this. Um, Connie doesn't really have this stuff. Now, what Constance does have is, first of all, an interesting feat. So a lot of times I do lots of swarms. I send in the swarms, go, 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 lots of guys. And I know when I send them in, I've got to be ready to take those models off. I mean, that's the reason why I have Alexia in my list is so that while I'm being slaughtered, at least I'm getting these corpses so I can bring my stuff back. Well, the nice thing about Constance is that she kind of mitigates those losses. So what's going to happen is that as you go and kill that first model, their armor goes up. She's going to get a token. All their armor is going to go up one. Oh, you killed another guy? Okay, another token. Armor goes up again. And what that really does is eventually brings you to the point where your armor, army, <laughs> armor is pretty crazy. You know, Sword Knights are armor 14, 16 if they're base to base. Um, we're not even going to add in Arcane Shield or anything like this. If you start getting killed like five guys, you're at armor 21. Armor 21 infantry is pretty crazy. And that means that once you've lost just like five guys, good luck trying to kill any more, right? You're almost needing heavies to try and get in there just to kill these infantry. And I mean, even a bad roll from a heavy might not kill these guys. So it's really, really nice. Now, after this, on the following turn, Consus is going to have this big, huge stack of tokens, and it's all going to turn into focus for her. And so if you are actually close to the caster or something like this, she can get in there and do a lot of damage. Uh, she has flank with anything that's Morrowind, so with her reach weapon, like she could do a lot of work there. I think she has reach anyway, but she could do a lot of work. However, she's not that fast. So what else are you going to do with this bajillion focus you might have? Well, she also has transference. And so after you've gone up and jammed, it, it's really hard to get charges off because how do you get three inches when you're already base to base? Well, the answer is you don't need to. You All you do is you have all this focus on Connie and says, okay, boost your damage. Hey, you, boost your damage. If you ever have to deal with high defense, boost your to hit. And it's a really nice way of getting around these things. So it really kind of synergizes with the swarm tactic and kind of counters the defense as well. Now, of course, that only happens, well, I guess it's not just after the feat. You can only be doing transference all the time, but it's really a, a massive deal after the feat. Stephen Walker asking, did he win the last, last competition? That video is coming up after this. Uh, there were like no other en entries. There were some entries. I believe that there were six overall, so you stand a pretty damn good chance. But anyway, we're going back to Constance here. And so another interesting thing with Constance is that she has dispelling on a stick. So if you don't take Epic Iris or something like this and you're dealing with enemy upkeeps, it can usually be a massive pain. If you go up against Body and Soul or something like this, these upkeeps can be crippling to you. Um, or it could just be Crippling Grasp. And she has Spell Ward. So, oh, you cast a spell on these guys, it's gone. Oh, you cast a spell on both these? Okay, Spell Ward, Spell Ward. And you can just drop off all these enemy upkeeps. And it's also a thing where she can just put on herself and make herself immune to magic. 
So if you were up against something like Veil vale 2 or Gorshade 3, you can just put that on yourself and say, yeah, good luck trying to spell assassinate me. It's just not going to happen. So nice little toolbox there uh, as well with the synergizing with this whole swarm thing uh she also gets it so they get plus two movement uh when they're charging so that gets them a little bit faster as well but yeah she's an interesting caster uh i definitely need to get into her more i painted her up and i still just been all theory that's a problem is a lot of the stuff is theory it's kind of like with these buccaneers i have never played these buccaneers but i am freaking you know, super excited to play them because I have been doing the hell out of theorizing and writing on little pieces of paper how far their threat is. So either way, there is the thoughts on constants, and that's all the questions I had on there. Let's see if I have any other questions on this. Oh, no, it's just that one from Stephen Walker. I have nothing else here. So those are all those questions. Uh, I still have a good number of viewers. So you guys have anything else you want me to talk about? Put them up there. But this is really it. I mean, I, I don't have my good old buddy Tin Man here. Uh, maybe this will be a little bit of a shorter show. I still have some other things to talk about. But, uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, some of the things I was working on here with these is I'm starting to try and find out oh, better ways to transport my stuff. And it's going to start being a bigger deal because before it was a lot more smaller infantry. I could throw them inside the foams. There were no problem. But now that I have like two units of halberdiers, and those halberdiers are a little bit interesting to try and transport because they got their big halberdiers all, the, all around the point. You know, you don't want them breaking off or scratching the other guys. Now I'm going to have to also do a thing where I have to tra uh, transport these six buccaneers and two renegades. And also my freaking, freaking... Um, galleon. That galleon breaks every single time I take him out. It's those two big, stupid, massive arms he has. And, you know, normally, some of these other jacks, you might have a ball joint, right? So it plugs in there, and it's in there pretty solid. This thing, it was like a ball that it has like a cup going on, and it always breaks. I, I literally think that there has been no time I've used that galleon and taken it out of my house, and it hasn't broken. One of those big monster arms just falls up. Oh, so no more crane arm for me. Oh, there goes the harpoon. And there's just no other way that I can actually model that thing. You know, it's not... Sometimes they actually do this. Uh, and they have their arms going to the side. And it looks pretty ridiculous. But, man, maybe that's what I need to do so it stops hitting things. I don't know. Maybe I have to get into magnetizing. But, ugh. There you go. So, otherwise... Um, some of the things I want to talk about is tomorrow I get to see the Age of Ultron. Really looking forward to that. Again, very jealous that Tin Man gets to go to this. Lots of great movies coming up, so really good, good time for that. Between Jurassic World, I'm a huge Jurassic Park fan, so can't wait to see that. Can't wait to see the, the Age of Ultron one. And I know, man, when I, I made sure to try and buy tickets for the first day, and... Now that I learned that it came out today on the Thursday and not the Friday, I am so worried that I'm going to wake up tomorrow and there's going to be spoilers everywhere. So we will see what happens with that. But either way, um, we'll probably be talking about it next time because I'll be seeing it. Tin Man will see it. Um, but I also, at this point here, we're three episodes in and I want to hear more from you guys. I want to be hearing what more do you want to see? What do you not like to see? Cause this is about the point where, okay, we've dealt with the glitches. We're starting to iron things out. Let's start trying to refine it. So if you guys have any suggestions of things that you want to see on here or that you don't want to see, please post it down below uh, as well. Hopefully you guys are painting or something while you're doing this. I love hearing what you guys are painting. And look out for the contest winner announcement. So Stephen Walker, look out for that. Plus the new contest for May going to be coming out as well. So there you go. Uh, we're going to cut this jank tank early because my buddy's not here. I got no tin man. So there you go. Thanks for watching, guys. And we'll catch you later. Bye.
the park is growing for 